Hi, my name is Sam Drake. I'm an architect in Oracle Times 10 in-memory database development. I'm going to talk to you today about the architecture and concepts for Times 10 scale-out. Times 10 18.1 supports two different deployment modes. Times 10 has been around for more than 20 years, and the way Times 10 has always been used for that time is what we're calling in 18.1 Times 10 Classic. It's still around, it's still fully supported, and is still going to be uh, used widely around the world. Times 10 Classic is everything that you know about Times 10 up to this point, right? It's an in-memory database, it supports active standby replication, it supports high availability, uh, it's very, very, it provides very, very low latency for reads and writes, and, and supports a variety of caching capabilities, allowing a Times 10 database to be used in conjunction with an Oracle database. Times 10 Scaleout is, is a brand new feature in uh, 18.1. It is, pro, it is the biggest feature, the biggest change in Times 10, um, in Times 10's 20 year history. And basically it is a scale out version of Times 10, a scaled out shared nothing version of Times 10 that allows you to take a single database in memory and distribute it across not just the memory of one machine, but across the memory of a, wide, a large number of machines. All providing a single system image that looks like a single database with no limitations. It's also highly available, provides very high throughput, and provides uh, great scaling, of course. So this talk is going to talk more about the concepts behind Times 10 Scaleout. So let's get started. When we talk about Times 10 Scaleout, we, we're going to talk about grids. So a grid is a set of interconnected hosts running Times 10 instances. You configure Times 10 on 10 machines or 12 machines or two machines, whatever you want, and you run, uh, run a sing single set of databases across them. So once you configure times 10 in a grid across a number of machines, a single grid can support one or more databases. Uh, just like in times 10 classic, you can install times 10 once, and then that single instance of times 10 can support two or three or four databases. You can do the same thing with a grid. A grid can have one or two or three or four or whatever number of databases. Each of those databases in, in times 10 scale out is distributed across all the instances of the grid. Part of, ev part of every database is present in every instance on every host of the grid. And we call those parts elements. So a, a database consists of elements. There's one element of each database in each instance of the grid. From a user's perspective, this all looks like one database. All the data on e in all of these elements is available from everywhere, from anywhere, all the time without restriction. You can have a single transaction which updates data in three different elements and atomically commits it. It really does look like a single database. The most, most important architectural piece of Times 10 scale out, especially when you compare it to things like Oracle Rack, is that times 10 scale out grids do not require shared storage. There is no, st no shared storage requirement. If you look at things like Oracle Rack, which have a, a large shared disk that all of the Oracle database instances all have access to simultaneously, um, there's nothing like that in times 10 grid. The machines all of course have to be connected together by networking, and we'll talk about the details of that but there's no shared disk, no shared storage. A database can maintain multiple copies of data simultaneously for high availability. In particular, we can support either one or two copies of data in 18.1. Uh, and so if one host goes down or one instance goes down, uh, the, your data is all still available, nothing is lost and, and uh, your applications keep running. So a grid is, connect, is a set of hosts uh, running times 10 instances, providing databases, and a database consists of one element per instance. Now in times 10 scale out in a single grid, there are two types of instance that we're gonna talk about. First of all, an instance is a running copy of the times 10 software. And there are in the grid, there are two different types of instances. There are data instances, and management instances. Data instances contain data for databases in the grid. The data instances are the ones that maintain those elements of databases. 
Management instances, on the other hand, don't store data for databases. Management instances are used to configure, manage, and administer the grid. Those management instances are kind of the boss of the data instances. They configure them, set them up, tell them what to do. A third type of instance is, is are classic instances. And if you're using Times 10 Classic, that's, that, that's the kind of instance you set up and use. So, so depending on how you configure and start them, uh, this, there's one set of Times 10 software, but it can be configured in three different ways. Now, in addition to Times 10 instances, each grid uses uh, the services of a Zookeeper cluster to keep track of the grid's membership. Zookeeper is, is an open source product from Apache. It's used by Times 10 as a membership service. Uh, it keeps track of which instances in the grid are operational at a given time. And we'll talk more about the Zookeeper servers um, in a little bit. In Times 10 18.1, each instance of Times 10 also uses the binaries that are in a Times 10 installation, right? You untar the Times 10 distribution into a directory, you get an installation. From the binaries in that installation, you create an instance, and the instance contains a symbolic link pointing back to the installation. In general, today we're not going to talk about the installations much. We'll just talk about instances. So at a high level, if we look at a single grid, every grid will contain a set of management instances, either one or two, two being preferred per, for production use some number of data instances, and that can scale anywhere from uh, 1 to 64 in the 18.1 release. Each grid will, will use a set of membership servers running Zookeeper, and for high availability reasons, that's usually going to be 1, 3, or 5. And, and there might be other resources as well. Um, those Zookeeper servers can be shared by several grids. They don't have to be dedicated for, a, for each grid. So let's talk a little bit more about Zookeeper. Zookeeper is an Apache project, um, and from the Apache website, they describe Zookeeper as a centralized service for maintaining configuration information, uh, naming, synchronization, and group services. It's an open source product, open source software uh, written in Java that is pretty widely used through the industry um, for a variety of functions. You could think of it as a, as a distributed repository that's used for, for a variety of configuration and control functions in a lot of distributed software today. The Times 10 distribution, when you unpack that, when you download that from Oracle and you untar it, uh, you'll get a copy of the Times 10 binaries, of course, but you'll also get a copy of the Zookeeper distribution. As I mentioned, Times 10 Grid uses Zookeeper as a membership service. It is the authoritative source of what Times 10 instances are up and which are down. Every Times 10 instance in a grid will connect to Zookeeper and will you know, send heartbeat information to Zookeeper to let Zookeeper know that the Times 10 instance is up and running. Uh, the Zookeeper servers will keep track of that information and can vote among themselves about you know, what, what's actually true at any given moment. And whenever Times 10 Grid needs to know whether a particular instance is up or down, we use the, zoo, the information in Zookeeper as the authoritative source of which instances are up and which ones are down at any given instant. This turns out to be very, very handy in handling split-brain networking situations. Suppose you have, um, say, two racks of servers with instances in each, and your connection between those racks goes down. Uh, what happens? You know, do you wind up with two independent grids which don't really know anything about each other and which do things independently? That could be really bad. Or, or, or do, does one side win and the other one goes idle? In Times 10 Grid, we want one side to win and the other side to go idle. Um, so we don't wind up, for example, with a single row having incompatible updates done in both, in both racks. And Zookeeper allows us to do that. Zookeeper is also used to minimize lengthy delays or timeouts when instances fail. For example, if we are internally, if we have established a connection from one instance to another instance and that connection fails, before we try to reestablish it and then wait for a long timeout to see if it responds, we'll ask Zookeeper, hey, is that other guy up? And if, that other, if Zookeeper says, nope, he's dead, then we don't even bother to try to reestablish that connection which saves the user from sitting around for 30 seconds or 60 seconds or something waiting for a timeout. 
It's important to note that Zookeeper doesn't store data, it doesn't process SQL, it only keeps track of metadata about the grid. It keeps track of what instances are up and which instances are down, and just a tiny bit of additional information, um, but that's really it. It's a very critical piece, but, it's, um, but it does, is not involved, it doesn't store data and it's not involved in processing SQL. Now let's talk about the networking topology in a grid. As I mentioned earlier, a grid consists of a number of management instances, data instances, Zookeeper servers, etc. So now let's talk about how they're connected. In a production grid, there will be two networks, an internal network and an external network. The internal network connects all of the instances of the grid and the Zookeeper servers that the grid uses together. And it is used internally by the grid for SQL execution, for administration and management. It doesn't have to be and shouldn't be exposed to the outside world, right? Ideally, this is just used, it's used for private communications inside of a grid. The external network, on the other hand, is all of the data instances should be connected to an external network and client server applications that want to talk to the databases provided by the grid can use the external network to communicate with the data instances of the grid to access the databases provided by the grid. You can combine these into a single network. You can't, in other words, you can just have one network instead of two. Uh, we wouldn't recommend that for production use. Just like in Oracle Rack, you have an internal net and an external net. Same thing here in Times 10 Grid. Ideally, you have an internal network and an external network. That external network doesn't necessarily talk to the, to the internet. External in this case means um, to the rest of your enterprise infrastructure. Now the instances of the grid are all run as and are created by the same OS user. We call that user the instance administrator. The instance administrator does everything about the grid. They configure the grid, they create and manage databases in the grid, all the instances of the grid run as the instance administrator. The instance administrator can create and stop and start databases and stop and start the grid itself. Basically, the instance administrator is the super user for the grid. This instance administrator user can be any OS user, any Linux user, uh, but it should have the same, the same name and the same numeric UID on every host. Similarly, there, there is a times 10 group, controls the group of users that are allowed to use direct mode access to the times 10 database. The instance administrator must be a member of that group and that group needs to be the same on every host as well. For management purposes, the times 10 software uses SSH between the hosts of the grid to configure it, install it, etc. And so the instance administrator user must be able to use passwordless SSH to SSH to any of the hosts that will run instances in the grid. Normally, if you just say SSH and you give it a host, the SSH command will prompt you for the password for your password on that remote host. And if you enter the right password, it'll let you log on. But it's actually pretty easy to configure passwordless SSH where you put the right assortment of public and private keys on all the machines, on all the hosts. And once you've done that, then you're allowed to SSH into a remote machine as yourself without entering a password at all. And to use Times 10 Grid, you have to configure passwordless SSH. The user can do that by themselves. It's really not too hard, but Times 10 also ships a command that you can use to set that up for you. 